Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in this box is a gaming PC that apparently doesn't work as it should. It was sent in by a viewer by the name of Andy who had built and upgraded this for his dad using surplus components. I'm told there are a few other goodies in the box too, so let's open it up and see what we have before attempting to diagnose and fix any issues. I want to say thanks first and foremost to Andy for donating this to the channel and for the much appreciated write up regarding the origins of how this PC came to be and what could potentially be the issue. The extra cables, system fans and retro DDR are also a very welcome inclusion and they will certainly come in handy for future videos. So let me give you the synopsis and timeline of the issues as described in this letter. So the suspected problem here is the motherboard, um, but there is quite the long list of potential problems or problems that have occurred during the time this PC has been used. So the PC would randomly not power on, suspected a dodgy USB cable, as when wiggling the cables the PC would fire up, uh, recabled the PC, new power and display port cables, replaced USB cables, uh, removed a lot of old cables, PC started to work. Um, after a couple of months, same issues, swapped out the dodgy 500 watt PSU for a branded PSU, that's always a good idea, regardless, to be honest. Uh, PC started working as normal, and then another couple of months, the same things, and this time it would randomly power on. Um, checked all the power settings in BIOS and Windows to make sure nothing was run on a power schedule, nothing had, and after about a month, the PC wouldn't power on anymore. Everything has been reseated and it's been tested with just the CPU and one stick of RAM with no front panel. That's always a good idea. I mean, the simplest way uh, for testing is always the best. Literally take out everything apart from the bare essentials when it comes to testing a suspected faulty PC. Just have the CPU, motherboard and RAM uh, with the power supply hooked up. If you have integrated graphics, just use those, and if not, just put a graphics card in the PCIe slot too. But let's take a look at this system, the inside, see what we've got, and see if we can diagnose the problem. First of all, then, we have the case itself, a Cooler Master ATX enclosure with an included Blu-ray drive. With all the RGB cases and other fancy effects we see a lot of these days, sometimes a simple all-black enclosure is a welcome sight. Next up, I removed the side panel for the first time and, oh well, here's the problem. I'll just straighten this up and the PC will work just fine, right? I wish. In all seriousness, it seems like my courier of choice had let me down a little. The system was very well packaged, but actually, this isn't the first time I've seen this happen. Nothing has snapped, the card has just come out from the PCIe slot. Must have been launched off the back of the delivery van. We've got some pretty nice parts in here, a Z370 MDS3H motherboard with 32 gigs of 2666 MHz DDR4, and atop that I believe is a 6 core i5-8400. It's nice to see a good quality PSU in here now as well. I'm a big fan of the Be Quiet units. This is a 730 watt model with more than enough juice to handle what is a 3 gigabyte GTX 1060. Hopefully this works because it'll be interesting to see how 3 gigabyte VRAM is doing these days. I'm going to put the card back in the slot properly before trying to power on the PC of course. Now despite the dust in here which may be tempting to wipe or blow away, I'd actually recommend not making any effort to clean up a second hand system until you've powered it up first. I say it a lot but if you tinker with things before testing them you won't know if the damage was already done or not. Better to be safe than sorry. Now attempting to power on the first time failed completely, there seemed to be no life from this PC as described. The next step was to take everything out of the case and test it bare bone style, hooking up the key components components but nothing else. I did keep all the RAM modules in the slots to see if it would all be recognised in the BIOS but again we didn't actually get that far because it didn't boot up. To boot without a case, it's simply a matter of shorting the power pins on the motherboard front panel header. This can be done with a screwdriver. Next I replaced the PSU because I have a couple of spare ones from other systems and it always makes sense to swap out a power supply before anything else. After all, it's just a matter of plugging in a couple of cables. This time, shorting the pins meant that the board fired up immediately and we got straight into the BIOS. I then tried the original Be Quiet unit in another system and that didn't work either so I think it's dead. 
I did read that the PC was having issues before the main parts got put into a new case with this PSU, so this might not be the simple answer I'm looking for. It seemed to be playing up every couple of months, unless both power supplies were bad of course. I then gave the case a quick clean, replaced the thermal paste and also swapped out the system fan at the back because the old one wasn't spinning. Thankfully we got a few spares in the box. Not my best work cable management wise but after another test the system seemed to work but the motherboard splash screen logo did look a little bit glitched, some of the text was missing. Could still very well be the motherboard as suggested causing issues too so I'll keep my eye on it and test this PC as often as I can. One thing's for sure, the system has been very well behaved over the last couple of days that I've had it and after the second successful boot I opened up GPU-Z and CPU-Z to check the specs and see if everything was detected and operating as it should be. The card was working fine in its intended PCIe 3 mode and all the RAM was working and running at the right speed and there were no issues with clocks for the GPU or CPU either. So far so good but I'll update you should anything go horribly wrong or stop working. I just had to test some games of course as well to ensure this PC could be put under some sort of duress and not immediately switch off or worse blow up. It also gives us a chance to see how this CPU and GPU combo is holding up. Elden Ring has a 60 FPS cap and I ran the game at 1080p medium for an average of 60 with a 1% low of 50 and a 0.1% low of 22, so a few issues in those more CPU intensive areas. Counter Strike 2 at 1080p with the low settings got us an average of 221, a result I was pretty surprised and pleased with to be honest. The 1% low was 102 and the 0.1% low was 38. Baldur's Gate 3 in the city here, 1080p with a low preset for an average of 57. FSR was not enabled here, but we could have enabled it for perhaps slightly higher frame rates. 57 was the average with a 1% low of 31 and a 0.1% low of 8. I don't mind playing this game with less than 60 FPS at all um, because it's not as fast paced as some of the other games that we've tested today. So this was a decent result as far as I'm concerned. GTA 5 with high settings, soft shadows, FX AA and the detail slider set to max got us 114 FPS with a 1% low of 78 and a 0.1% low of 64. Starfield, well the less said about this one the better, but even with the lowest settings we saw 26 FPS which was admittedly higher than I thought, I was expecting about 10, 15, something like that. Turning on any form of upscaling made performance worse, in fact it cut the frame rate in half, so we're best left at 1080p default here, or we could turn the native res down of course. Cyberpunk 2077 with the lowest settings and FSR 2.1 set to balanced got us at least 60 FPS, 64 to be precise, with fairly respectable percentile lows given the CPU and GPU specs. Finally then it's Fortnite which offered up 96 FPS on average with the medium preset, 100% 3D res and TAA, although there were a few little issues here and there which I think were primarily caused by the processor. Now overall I'm sure this isn't the last you'll hear of this system, I plan to test a few parts individually, of course the 3 gig 1060 definitely deserves a look at what it can do in 2024. Uh, thanks to all of you for watching of course, special thanks to Andy for sending this PC over and his dad of course who I now have heard has an Alienware system with what is a 13th gen i7 so that's a pretty nice upgrade. I hope this PC continues running smoothly but you never know and if the motherboard does die hopefully I can find a cheap replacement. Thanks again and I'll see you all in the next one.